By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Hey, what's going on everybody? You're tuning into another episode of 20 Tim Minutes. I am your host, Tim McCarthy. This is a podcast that focuses on mental health through humor, insight, and personal stories. You can learn more about me at 20timminutes.com. You can buy some of my merch. You can download my app. You can read some testimonials. You can look at my face. There's so much to do on 20timminutes.com. You can also, don't forget, you can text me if you want. It's not my real number, but it's a number that you can contact me with. It's 617 617- Five two three nine three three three. Again, that number is six one seven five two three nine three three three. You know when you pass on a number to somebody, you'll be like, oh, six one seven, and then they either repeat the number back to you, or they don't say anything at all, or they go, mm-hmm. The people that repeat the number back to you while you're saying it is very annoying. So I'll be like six one seven. They'd be like six one seven. Like you heard me. I don't need to hear the number back. I'm giving you the number I already know. You don't know the number. You don't have to repeat it to give it back to me. I'm saying it correctly. If you don't understand it, then let me know. You know how I've talked about, like, I have to do episodes every week, no matter if I'm in a good mood or a bad mood? This week is one of those times I'm kind of in a bad mood. I don't really know why. I think I'm kind of hungry. I'm cranky. I'm doing this last minute once again, being procrastinating. Being procrast- being a procrastinator. I'll get into that a little bit. But, uh, yeah, no intro to this week. Um, sometimes I just don't do them. Sometimes you just got to get me and only me, the one and only Tim McCarthy. So therapy has been going good. I had my most recent one. I, my memory is so trash. I know it went well. He asked me a question because I, I, I made this comment that like, sometimes I get bored of conversations and I'm just being realistic. Like there's been conversations where I'm just not interested and you have to pretend that you're interested to be a nice person, but there's times I'm just not interested in a story. We've all been there. I'm just, I'm just saying it. I know what people are thinking. I'm just saying it. And he asked me if I, if he was one of those people and I felt bad because he obviously was thinking about it. And it's like, I, did I keep my therapist pissed up? But no, I was very clear that I was like, no, we, this is, I explained to him, like, when I have conversations with him, it's like surreal. And when I'm done, I'm like, that just happened. But we're still working on me, trying to be better, trying to not be burnt out about everything be negative um it's uh, there's so much going on with me and that's it's very tiring like i'm just always tired i'm always procrastinating i'm i'm not getting into shape but again i gotta stop feeling sorry for myself i'm trying to go back to the gym where i am and i'm just not like i'll get up to the gym i'm just like oh i'm just so defeated and i can't get over that hump that hump is very high right now and i'm trying so hard to to fix it it ain't easy and i know i gotta keep on putting in the hard work but Man, life ain't fucking easy, huh? Just brutal. So yeah, therapy costs. I'm like, I'm getting bills. Like I got like a bill for 200 bucks and I, I found out my copay was 15 bucks. So I was like trying to do like the math on this. I'm like, why is my bill so fucking much? And I had to make sure and I called the insurance company and my anxiety ass didn't want to talk to anybody. I was hoping they had like a text feature and they didn't. I even called my therapy therapy uh, place, my therapist's like office. And I told them to leave me a message because I didn't want to talk to them. I was like, just leave me a message with the answer. I don't want to know it. So I sent them a message through their website. Like I, I, I just have so much anxiety talking on the phone or getting an answer. Like I had a voicemail and it took me like two hours just to listen to it. I don't know why I do that. I don't like, it's like weird confrontation where it's not confrontation. It's just like having to deal with something. And it's, I don't know. I'm just fucking weird. I'm a weird dude. And I just got to live with it. Same with like quest diagnostics. I got to look, look into that because I had a bunch of COVID tests like a while ago and I like, Quest Diagnostics is like one of those things, like, I, I don't even know what they really do, but I know they, they deal with like, if you get an STD test or if you get like COVID and they probably do other things, but those are the only two things that I, I'm aware of. So like, that's, that's another thing that I'm paying for. It's just like, everything's so much for fucking money. Like eggs are like eight bucks a, like a pack now. Like, why is that? I was reading it had to do with like the bird flu. It's like, oh my, like what's next? Huh? What's next that we're going to have to deal with? Because I don't know if I'm ready for it. Eggs can't even get a bacon, egg, and cheese. Now you just gotta get a bacon and cheese sandwich. No egg. Sands the egg. I have a tough time reading. And a lot of the times, if you watch this on YouTube, I don't make eye contact with the camera because I'm reading stuff. And it's pretty much just like a nursery. I'm reading you a nursery book. 
uh, of mental health to learn that. But this is a great website. It's called summary.com, but it's spelled with no vowels. It's S-M-M-R-Y.com. And what you do is you put the link in of an article and it will like break it down for you in like just a couple paragraphs of what it was all about. And I use that a lot. Even sometimes I'll use it and I still can't read it. I, as the great Nick Miller said, I don't know how to read. I just think I memorized a lot of words. And I think that's me. I think I just memorized a lot of words in my day. And I don't really know how to, how to like take them in. You know what I'm saying? I, I can say the words, but I can't read and retain. That's what my problem is. Retaining information is very hard for me, especially having ADHD, which is like I'm going to get into right now. I'm going to get into it right now. Adults with high levels of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder are more likely to experience anxiety and depression than adults with high levels of autistic traits, according to a new research led by psychiatrists at the University of Bath in the UK. University of Bath, it's probably called Bath or something. Those crazy Brits. The study is the first to show that ADHD is more predictive of poor mental health outcomes in adults than other neurodevelopmental conditions like autism. The researchers found that ADHD traits were highly predictive of the severity of anxiety and depression symptoms. The higher the level of the ADHD traits, the more likely a person is to experience severe mental health symptoms. Yeah, it's quiet right now. If you're watching YouTube, I'm just staring at the camera. But yeah, that's uh, that's pretty accurate, I would say. My ADHD is very high level. I think if you deal with me on a daily basis, you know that. Again, I take almost the maximum amount of Adderall. I take 50 milligrams a day, and sometimes it doesn't even affect me because I'm so depressed. That's why like, I can't get motivated. Like, I'll drink coffee, energy drinks, and it still doesn't work. It's because I'm depressed. And that's just like sad. And I got to stop feeling sorry for myself. I got to stop. But it's, it's just the way I feel. It's the way I feel, people. Further research is now needed to delve deeper into understanding exactly why ADHD is linked to poor mental health. Well, we should get on that, particularly in terms of mental health processes that might drive people with ADHD traits to engage in anxious and depressive thinking. Yeah, this is, uh, this is pretty accurate. I have a tough time with my anxiety and depression. And a lot of people don't think I have anxiety because I'm such an extrovert at times, but I really do. I I have like the phone anxiety. I have going out by myself anxiety. I think about the future all the time. I've been thinking about death again, like way too much. Like people be dying. Like one of my favorite wrestlers died, Jay Briscoe, the Briscoe brothers. He got in a car accident. And I think his daughter got fucked up too, but he ended up dying. And it's like, I think to myself, it's like, I can die any minute. Any, Any of us can die any minute. And it like freaks me out. And I need to, like, I think at this stage of my life, I need to make a will. Like, I don't really have much, but I have things where, like, I need people to do for me. Like, if you get myself, like, if I die, like, smash my cell phone. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, smash my laptop instead. No, I'm just kidding. Um, that's the stuff I've been thinking about a lot is just having to deal with worrying about dying all the time. And that's what my anxiety does is, is worry about that. Like, I feel like I, I'm going to go somewhere and someone's going to shoot up the place and I'll be the only one that gets hit. Like, that's what's probably going to happen to me. Fuck. So, yeah, I've been procrastinating. Uh, procrastination is linked to increased anxiety, stress, pain, unhealthier lifestyles, and delays in seeking assistance for general health problems. I'm pretty much just reading my life. Like, this is so annoying. Like, I know that these are my problems, and I still can't face them, and I can't fix them. I can fix them, and I'm just not, and I don't know why. And I'm going to therapy. I'm going to talk to my prescriber about my meds and see what I can do. Like, I'm gaining weight from the Abilify, I figured out, and just my bad eating habits. Um, No specific health outcome was strongly associated with procrastination. The results suggest that procrastination may be of importance for a wide range of health outcomes, including mental health problems, disabling pain, and unhealthy lifestyle. Well, I got two out of the three, and uh, that's making a lot of sense. Um, but yeah, how do you guys deal with procrastination? I, I did it today. This is my this episode is uh, recorded pretty late because one, I didn't want to do it. Two, I was procrastinating. Three, I just didn't want to do it. And it sounds like it's funny because it's like. Listen to my show. Tim doesn't like to do it. I do like to do it. It's just one of the, like, I just got me on a bad day. Like that, those are my bipolar days where one day I'm like, oh, I can rule the world. And the next day I'm like, nah, the world's going to fucking kill me one of these days. That's just my life. That's just how I think every day. Some people, like, 
people talk to me like on the reg and they get like my the best version of me because like I love texting and texting's a lot easier and I can portray myself like in a great mood or, or that. Or if like I don't reply, that's kind of like when I'm in a bad mood or I'm just like not feeling like just even talking to the world. But I'm pretty good at like masking my depression um, pretty well, unless you listen to this podcast and you're like, Tim is fucking depressed. He's procrastinating. He's got insomnia, I think. I think I do have insomnia, um, but I wanted to talk about burnout because burnout is huge when it comes to the podcast. Um, if you don't know what burnout, it's a state of emotional, physical, and mental exhaustion caused by excessive and prolonged stress. And uh, I don't want to stress about the podcast, but I do stress a little bit about it because I have to get it out. I have to do a good episode. I have to do all these things. It occurs when you feel overwhelmed emotionally drained and unable to meet constant demands as the stress continues you begin to lose the interest and motivation that led you to take on a certain role in the first place yep that is a great definition of what's going on burnout reduces productivity and saps your energy leaving you feeling increasingly helpless hopeless cynical and resentful (laughs) oh shit i'm burnt out ain't i Uh, eventually you may feel like you have nothing more to give Yep, that is, I feel like I max out on the podcast. Oh, oh, well, it's like I have all these great guests and it's like, what's next? What's next? And I know I'm in my own way. I just, I got to figure out what that next thing is to like get me over the edge, get me over the hump, I should say, um, of this podcast. The negative effects of burnout spill over into everyday life, including your home, your work, and your social life. Burnout can also cause long-term changes to your body that make you vulnerable to illnesses like colds and flu. Jesus Christ, burnout can kill you. Because of its many consequences, it's important to deal with burnout right away. I'm a procrastinated, depressed, anxious burnout. How the fuck am I going to turn it around that way? Well, let me tell you. Um, I'm using a guide, help guide. Here it is. Um, Are you on the road to burnout? Is every day a bad day? Uh, Are you caring about your work and home life? Seems like a total waste of energy. You're exhausted all the time. The majority of your day is spent on tasks you find either mind-numbingly dull or overwhelming. Jesus Christ, this is me. You feel like nothing you do makes a difference in it or is appreciated. No, no, sometimes I I, I don't feel like that. I feel like sometimes you got to feel appreciated. Um, Physical signs of symptoms of burnout, feeling tired and drained most of the time, lowered immunity, frequent illnesses, frequent headaches, muscle pains, change in appetite, uh, emotional signs and symptoms of burnout, sense of failure, self-doubt, feeling helpless, trapped, defeated, detachment, feeling alone in the world, loss of motivation, and then behavioral signs, withdrawing from responsibilities, isolating yourself, procrastinating, using food, drugs, and alcohol to cope, uh, taking frustration out on others, and uh, skipping work or coming in late, leaving early. I don't do that. I'm, I am very time anxious. I get on time for everything. I've been late, I think, once in my 10 years at my job. I have to get there so early. Granted, I have an hour drive, so I have not. I don't have much wiggle room to figure out if I'm going to get stuck in traffic or I flip my truck and die. It's one of those two. Um, but yeah, and there's a big difference between stress and burnout. So, um, so you can have loss of energy with stress, but then you have loss of motivation, ideals, and hope with burnout. Um, you can stress leads to anxiety disorders. Burnout leads to detachment and depression. Um, Stress is primary damage is physical. Um, For burnout, primary damage is emotional. And there's a lot of causes of uh, burnout. My cause is, I don't know. So let's look. Um, Work-related, feeling like you have little or no control, lack of recognition, unclear of overly demanding job expectations, lifestyle, working too much without time for socializing or relaxing, lack of close supportive relationships, which I feel like a lot of my friendships are dwindling. I think that's because of me. I think that's my fault. Uh, Not getting enough sleep. Yep, that's me. And personality traits is a pessimistic view of the world and yourself, the need to be in control, uh, reluctant to delegate to others, and uh, high-achieving type A personality. When dealing with burnout, you need to recognize, reverse, and resilience. Watch out for the warning signs of burnout. Undo the damage by seeking support and managing stress. And resilience. Build your resilience by stress by taking care of your physical and emotional health. And here's some tips. Dealing with burnout, tip number one, turn to other people. Reach out for those closest to you, uh, such as a partner, family, or friend. Opening up won't make you a burden. Again, you're not a burden in life. You just want to get help. Um, Sometimes people are flattered when you go out and ask them for help. Uh, Be more sociable with your coworkers. Developing friendships with people you work with can help buffer you from burnout. 
limit your contact with negative people, um, which is always good. I feel like I don't really talk to much negative people. I think I talk to myself a lot and that person's pretty negative. And yeah, connect with the cause or community group that's personally meaning to you. That's just like, if you want to donate, like, again, I've talked about that, like giving money or giving gifts or giving whatever your time, that's like a feel good for like your endorphins and then find new friends, the power of giving tip two: reframe the way you look at work, try to find something value in work, find balance in your life, make friends at work and make sure to take time off for yourself. Reevaluate tip three, reevaluate your priorities, set boundaries. Don't forget to do that. Take a daily break from technology. Don't be on your phone as, as much as I am. Nourish your creative side. Um, try something new. Start a fun project or resume a new hobby that you tried or uh, something like that. Something that doesn't have to do with work or your, or every day. Uh, set aside relaxation time, which uh, that's pretty much me when I procrastinate. Get plenty of sleep, which I'm having trouble sleeping. I, I have to talk to him about that. I feel like I might be an insomniac, and it's um, it's pretty tough. Um, make exercise a priority. That's pretty much big for anything mental health wise mental health and physical activity is very linked uh powerfully you know what i'm saying so even if you go for a walk like sometimes i just go a walk on the treadmill at like a 10 in, 10 incline and walk just like like a brisk walk and just get my uh, legs up support your mood and energy levels with healthy diet obviously minimize sugar and carbs reduce your high intake of foods that can affect your mood like caffeine unhealthy fats eat more omega-3 fatty acids to give your mood a boost i should probably do that i've been doing vitamin b12 and vitamin c which i it was a buy one get one half off so i got the vitamin c i went in for the b12 but i left with the vitamin c as well i'm a sucker for deals if you give me a deal i'm a sucker for it a little bogo love a good bogo avoid nicotine and drink alcohol in moderation if you drink at all um that's obviously a big one so be sure to take care of yourself if you're feeling burnt out uh don't don't fear about reaching out to people you can reach out to me 617-523-9333 or is it 781 i Holy shit, I think I got the wrong number. 781-523-9333. I put 617. So you might text the wrong person if um if you do that. But yeah, burnout is is something bad and I and I can't do it. Um I'm gonna talk about insomnia next week because that'll be a lot of uh stuff to put in. But I'm gonna end this episode with mental health facts. I got about 15 facts I'm gonna rattle off and uh hopefully it's gonna be on the test. It'll be on the test. One in five Americans have experienced some sort of mental illness with one in 25 experiencing serious mental illness, such as bipolar disorder or schizophrenia. So I am the one in 25. You get me and 24 other people, I'm that guy. Suicide accounts for over 800,000 deaths globally each year with over 41,000 in the U.S. alone. It is the second leading cause of death worldwide for 15 to 29 year olds. The rate of mental health disorders doubles for those who have been to war or lived through a major disaster, which I, I feel like that makes sense. People with mental health issues are generally nonviolent. In fact, only 3 to 5% of violent acts can attribute to people with a serious mental illness. Yeah, because we don't want to harm other people. We pretty much just want to harm ourselves. So, again, that makes sense. Many factors can lead to mental illness, including genetics, physical illness or injury, and traumatic life experience. Many people do not seek treatment for mental health due to the associated stigma. Only 44% of adults with diagnosable mental illnesses receive treatment. Treatment for mental health problems doesn't always consist of prescribed or medication, over-the-counter medication. Therapy, yoga, meditation, and holistic treatments can all help. Uh, assu- That's a weird word. Can all help. By addressing risk, factor, risk factors such as trauma, it is possible to prevent certain medical diso- certain mental health disorders, especially in children and adolescents. Improving mental health services in low to medium income countries is not as costly as some may think. An investment of only two to four dollars would have a major impact of millions of lives each year. Serious mental illness costs the U.S. almost two hundred billion in lost earnings. That is fucked. of adults in the U.S. who have had a problem with substance abuse also help also suffer from a mental illness. That's a high number. 50.5. That's more than half. 50.5% of adults in the U.S. who have had a problem with substance abuse also have suffered from mental illness. Wow. 20% of youth have mental health condition with one in 10 young people have an experience of period of major depression. Depression is real, man. No matter how old you are. 
Members of the LGBTQ community are twice as likely as straight individuals to have a mental health condition, which I'm going to go over next week's episode with the uh, transgender youth reported more um, reported more um, issues with mental mental illnesses. 70 to 90 percent of people who seek proper treatment for mental health disorders witness a significant reduction in symptoms. That number would be a lot higher if it was affordable for everybody and everyone can get it. Because 70 to 90 is pretty good, but it could be a lot better. Obviously, the goal is 100, but it's not realistic. I'm being, I'm a realist. And number uh, 15, most people living with a mental illness lead productive lives despite their challenges. Bam. That's the way to end it right there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode of 2010 Minutes. I am your host, Tim McCarthy. Please reach out if you need help. I love you guys so much. And have a good one. And we're clear. This podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. If you are feeling suicidal, please dial 911.